What's good, my YouTube fam? I'm Retro Gamer Yasuke, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Redream emulator. For those of you who don't know, the Redream emulator is for Sega's last great console, the Dreamcast. So let's get started. Before we get started, I would like to let you know that this emulator is very easy to use. You don't even need a BIOS for it because it provides one for you. What you will need is 7-Zip to unzip the file though. I've already shown you how to do that in my first tutorial video and I'll leave a link in that description below. You will need a controller and some games. As far as the games, I already covered that in that first video. So you already got that link in the description below. Now for the controller, you can use whatever controller you want. It does not have to be a Sega Dreamcast controller. As you can see, I have an Xbox One controller here. It's a PDP one that I got from Best Buy. You can use a wired or a wireless. It really doesn't matter as long as it works for Windows. The first thing you wanna do is go to your browser. Then you wanna type Redream Download. It's going to take you to this website called redream.io. Click on it. Now, if you would like to support the creators of this emulator, and I suggest that you do, it's a one time fee of only $6, and you get some exclusive features. For those of us who can't right now, we have two types of releases we have the development releases and the stable releases. Now, if you plan on streaming this emulator through OBS at any point in time, I suggest you do the stable release because whenever you have a develop, developer window open for OBS, it sometimes causes issues. So seeing that we're gonna download this for Windows, we're gonna click on this. But if you're a Mac user, a Linux user, or a Raspberry Linux user, that's available too. I'm going to stick with the stable release because there's really not no difference between the development and the stable one. Once that's done downloading, we can exit out of here. Then you want to go to your file explorer. If you don't know where that is, you can click on here and you could search for it. And there it is file explorer. The next thing you want to do is go to downloads because you just downloaded that. Now here's the part where you need 7-Zip. You're going to right click it. You're going to go to show more options. You're going to go to 7-Zip. And I prefer to extract to the file that it's named because it creates a folder for it. You can create a new folder and name it whatever you would like. But I like the folder that it creates when I'm actually creating it. Now I don't need this anymore. so. We're going to delete it. Now this part is optional, but I like to move my programs, especially my emulators to another place. So I go to my C drive, which is my internal SSD and move it to my program files right here. That way it's out the way, not in sight. And I normally don't go there because once I open the file, here it is. I send it to my desktop. I right click, I go to show more options, I go to send to, and it creates a shortcut to my desktop. That way, when I exit out of here, it appears on my desktop. And here it is. Let's put it right next to Duck Station. All right, now we're gonna open it up. Okay, there's not too many configurations that you need to do with this emulator like I previously stated. It normally calibrates itself to your system. So that's a good thing. First thing we're gonna do is go to input. As you can see, my Xbox One controller is already set. It set the dead zone and it customized the binds already. Now, if I would like to change this, I can, but I won't, I don't need to. Second thing I like to do is change the video. 
Now the window size, I only go one octave up because if you try to record it off of a full screen mode, it sometimes doesn't catch it. And I like the game aspect ratio, 16 by nine. Okay, as far as the system is control, uh, concerned, I do not mess with this in no way, shape or form. I don't need to. All right, let's go to the games. Now, as you can see, there's no games here. That's because it doesn't know where to look. So I'm gonna go to library. Now this right here, we're just gonna exit out of all of this. It says PS1 ROMs. I have no idea why I decided PS1 was the way to go. We're gonna go to directory. We're gonna go to my external hard drive, which is the D drive. And from this point on, I'm gonna move my mouse out the way because I don't need it. I can use my controller which I'm about to do right now. As you can see, it is moving. We're gonna go to ROMs, because that's where I keep my ROMs, and we're gonna look for Sega Dreamcast, because that is what this emulator is for. And we're gonna add them. As you can see, I do have a lot of games. Loads of games. All right, let's go back up. And you can see I have GDI files, that's what you want to use, but you can also use CDI files. Okay. I go to add and boom. As it populates, it adds artwork for you, which is good. As you can see, I have some games here that popped up and then I have some games that it appears that it doesn't pop up. Don't worry. I downloaded the stable release, but if I downloaded the developer, release the latest one they would pop up this is midway arcade treasures greatest hits one and two and so i know it works because i've played it before and sometimes when you load these games up it'll say it doesn't work like this south park game and then the next time you open up this emulator it will instead of waiting for if and maybe just download the developer one if you would like okay so there you have it. I have all the games. And just to show that the controller works, we're going to play. Hmm. This third, third strike Street Fighter three. I actually never played this game before this tutorial, so it's new for me. Please be advised that there's going to be a little bit of screen tearing going on. Don't worry about it. I'm recording my entire screen off of ClipChamp, off of the browser. So it's gonna mess up, especially for my low-end PC. So don't think it's the emulator, it's not. The auto load canceled because I never opened this game before. But as you can see, it works clear as day. All I got to do is press start and I'm in there. Let's see. I like to use Ken. And I like that Shuruke. Oh, this is nice. Let's go to Japan. This guy's pretty good. He's blocking all my moves. And there you have it. It works. Also, you can press escape at any time during your gameplay. And if you go over here to manage cheats, you have cheats available for you. All you have to do is toggle them on and toggle them off if you would like. 
it will say pending on restart. So maybe you want to restart this game. You could just go right here. And if you have a multi-disc game, you can just ch change the disc right here. And you have a save state. You only get one if you don't want to support the developers and creators of this emulator. So I'll, that is a good incentive to do so. Remember, it's only one time fee of $6. So don't be cheap. Well, that's it for this video. Any questions, comments, and concerns, let me know in the comment section below. As far as my next tutorial, look for that in my community tab post. I'm going to leave a poll up for you. Well, I want you guys to have a great rest of your day. Peace be with you. Remember to stay positive, manifest your reality, and embrace your dreams. You'll definitely catch me in the next one.